Hey guys, this is Coach Chris here. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own fights. Um, today we're looking at uh, Wooly from Ireland against Olsen from Sweden. Uh, I've seen Wooly a couple times. Uh, he's Ireland Olympian. Uh, he's been doing really, really. He's he's done really, really well, and this guy is really, really strong. Um, and uh, his leg technique is really good, especially his front leg. This guy from Sweden, I haven't watched as much, but um, we'll see where he goes from here. And uh, we're gonna kind of break. We're just gonna be a lot shorter of a video. We're gonna break this down kind of into key things I notice, and hopefully that's uh, easier for you guys as audience to digest. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But anyway, let's get started. So we're uh, minute 21 in. Wooly's up by three, and uh, what we're gonna see is uh, why it's so important for you to have a left leg spin kick especially against front leg fighters. Cancel right here. And that's the first one. Um, so against someone with the front leg, it's always coming to your front side, to your front anyway. Uh, that spin is open. And there are many instances in here where uh, Olsen takes advantage of that. So there, that's one. The second one is up here, 511. Now notice uh, Wooly leaned himself back. That one was able to evade it, but Olsen still made the attempt. And so uh, to keep that in mind, those are two two spin kicks to the head already. Uh, the third one that I was able to see, I think he throws one more in here, but I wasn't able to find it. Uh, nine, that's up here. Near the end of the second round. Tries it a third time. Wooly's doing a good job evading. So this has been the third time he's thrown it. The first time caught Wooly off guard. The second two times, Wooly knows that if he's pressing him really hard, uh, in general, it looks like Olsen is going to try and for that spin kick. So he's been defending himself up, tie, up high and leaning back to avoid the spin kick. Now here in the third round, uh, over here, 12, 8. I want you guys to watch uh, Olsen. So it's the same kind of setup, but just a different different target look or different uh, area to hit. Boom. And like, there's no crowd to cheer or anything like that. Cause it's COVID there's no audience in here, but that timing and the, the same, it's the same timing. Cause he knows Wooly's going to press and uh, he knows Wooly's been defending up top. So he goes down low and is able to score the uh, four points on there, which gives him the lead. And what I really like and commend him for is uh, after holding the lead like this, the the area Wooly's been getting him has been on the follow-up and getting him in the corner. And uh, so his whole defense after this, I'm just going to give you little clips of it, um, has been to actually usually initiate the combat, wait for Wooly himself to come in. and or, uh, Instead of waiting for Wooly to come in, he's going to press the offense. Even though, even though he's up. Now, a lot of players I know like to sit on defense. As you get more and more experience, you know that you need to maintain that offensive pressure. You can't let, uh, you can't sit back and let your opponent try a bunch of different things on you as you're sparring and you're trying to hold your lead. You need to keep them under pressure, uh, keep them guessing as to what you're going to do. Because if you let, you sit back and let them think about what they want to do, they get to try out a bunch of different options. Some of whom might work. And you don't want that to happen. You want, you want just. You want to keep them guessing as to what you're going to do the whole time. That was a pretty good punch and score. Uh, up here, there's a break, yeah. And then, so here, 12 seconds. A lot of people, this is like, I mean, this is kind of almost an insurmountable lead. That's that's six points, kind of hard to kind of hard to get through. Uh, but what I like here the most is that Olsen, oh, we'll watch these last 12 seconds. Initially, uh, he's not going to sit back and let Wooly do what he wants. The experienced side of it is saying, I need to push this fight. So he goes for the offense, locks his legs up. Um, this cut kick, I mean, this is kind of a small one, but the cut here isn't really even a score. It's really just to tie his legs up so nothing can really come out of that and score. Unless Wooly were to go super, super high. Jams it up. He's purpley okay with that. Eight seconds left. Same thing, still going on the offense. Cuts. Just poking at him, poking at him. Nothing non-committal, leaning back. He can't reach him. Wooly knows it's done. Uh, and that's it. Quarterfinal. That's the end of it. 
um, that was a quarterfinal for the Olympic qualifiers. So Wooly is not, doesn't look like he's going this year unless Europe has some kind of other thing going on. But the main takeaways are if you hit something in the first round and your opponent adapts, it doesn't mean you need to chuck it out right away and go with something else. It could mean that you just change the target. Same timing. He let Wooly, uh, he only threw it when Wooly really, really committed to his attack. Um, the first one hit, the second one missed, third one missed, the fourth one he just changed target, and that's what gave him the lead to to win. And then the last point really is to uh, hold on to your lead by maintaining your offense uh, during the last parts of the match. And so he's not going full-blown offense, but he's making sure to keep Wooly on his toes. So that's it for today, guys, and uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, please, if you did, leave a comment below, and that really helps me out, and I'll see you guys next time.